My name is Mark Rasinovich. I'm Chief Technology Officer of Microsoft Azure. Service Manager is the universal control plane for all Azure services. You can see here a kind of architecture diagram of Azure Resource Manager, ARM. That top layer there is a REST API. And talking to that REST API, you've got the Azure portal, you've got CLI and PowerShell, you've got SDKs. But underneath that REST API are what are called resource providers. So ARM is really a front door and the resource providers provide all of the service specific control plane operations and actions. You can see a whole bunch of them there just shown as examples. But what ARM provides by being a universal control plane is that it manages resource metadata, uh, groups of resources into resource groups, manages subscriptions, management groups for policy, tags that you can assign to the resources. It keeps track of those things. It implements role-based access control across the whole thing, and it keeps activity logs and telemetry about all of the activities on the control plane. So this means that you get the same capabilities for management, monitoring, policy across all Azure resources uniformly. Now, one of the challenges with Azure Resource Manager is you can, of course, interact with it imperatively just by calling the REST API or performing one-off actions in the CLI or PowerShell or the portal. But where the true value and power of ARM comes is with declarative deployments through Azure Resource Manager JSON templates. Now, the JSON templates themselves are fairly verbose and that's just kind of a side effect of the JSON language and the fact that we have to represent all these properties in JSON. And the verbosity and the use of certain primitives like expressions uh, have made it very cumbersome and complicated to write anything more than simple resource deployments using the ARM JSON. We've done a lot of improvements in the tooling with Visual Studio Code plugins and IntelliSense that make it a lot easier and the kind of uh, deploy pre-deployment checks that we do. But still, we thought we could take things uh, much further. And that much further is with a domain-specific language that is mapped directly conceptually one-to-one -to, -one to ARM. Now, you might be saying, why didn't you pick a uh, language off the shelf? Well, ARM and our philosophy is declarative in nature. So we needed a language that's declarative, not imperative. We don't want turn complete machines here in the sense that we could run loops and you end up basically with scripts. Scripts are a path towards amazing levels of complexity. And so we want the system to be able to, to do hard work for you. And that means declarative deployments. And that also means much easier to understand. So this required us to really look at a declarative language that really treats the ARM JSON as an intermediate syntax, like an assembly language. You can go right to the assembly language, but you can also start with this higher level abstraction, the BICEP project, which is completely open source. You can contribute to it. You can make comments to it. And what I thought was is show you a little bit of what BICEP aims to do in this intermediate form so that you can get engaged early. And it's not near a V1.0 release, but this kind of shows you where we're going. We've done many, many interviews with customers. We've got many customers that are in, in pilot uh, helping us design this. And we've even got Anders Heilsberg, uh, one of the foremost language designers on the planet who is working on TypeScript, borrowed him to give us advice on how to construct this language. So let's go take a look at Project Bicep in action. So here you can see I've got a, a Bicep file that describes the deployment of a virtual machine. And you'll notice already that it's a lot more concise than a JSON equivalent that you'll see in an ARM template traditionally in a few minutes. For example, you can see that we've got parameters that we define like we would with any kind of program up at the top where these are the configuration settings that can come in from another file. They'll include, for example, the admin username and the admin password or the Windows OS version, the allowed properties that we've got for the virtual machines that we're gonna be deploying. You can also see, as we scroll down a little bit, the different resources that we're creating, including, for example, the storage account that is going to be where the disks are stored for the virtual machine. You can see the 
the public IP address, you can see the network security group and the properties. Again, much more concise than traditional JSON. You can see the NIC, you can see now the virtual network itself, a uh, virtual machine itself rather. Now when I compile this with using the BICEP compiler command line utility, it compiles it down to standard ARM JSON, which I'm gonna load side by side. And you can kind of see now directly comparing the two, the savings that we get with the simplicity. Like we don't have to quote all the properties like we do in JSON. But there's some other benefits that you get right off the bat. For example, you can see right here, the storage account name. We use this kind of very concise way to create a unique name based off of the resource group address, which is dynamically generated at deployment time. And you can see that that gets translated to the more verbose kind of awkward format that you would have to deal with if you were dealing directly with the ARM JSON. Similarly, if we scroll down a little bit, you can see the virtual network, which has got a virtual security group attached to a, a subnet within it. The same kind of more concise syntax that you get. But where it really shines is in, if you take a look at the way that we labeled the resource group, the resources by name, we can reference them directly. Instead of specifying the full ARM IDs, we simplify, simply reference the names and BICEP takes care of expanding it. So here's security group ID, and you can see that expands as we recompile into the appropriate ARM ID. Not only that, but it sees that we created a, a reference to that security group ID, so it knows we also depend on it. So it created automatically the depends on command inside of that resource definition for us. And you reference that same security ID. So you get just here a flavor, and here I'll go deploy that JSON template, and it's gonna deploy just like any other. But with BICEP, and this is just the first step of some of the benefits you're gonna get, uh, you're gonna see much more come online over the next few months, where BICEP is just, we believe, gonna become the main way that people author templates for ARM.